Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Aberdeen Harbour, on the northeast coast of Scotland. One of Britain's oldest businesses. It's like I can be about you can just never stop. <laughs> and one of Europe's most modern ports. You've got clears to sail now. This is a glimpse into a hidden world. On our way. He's under the bell now. Of the men and women who keep the harbour running. It's fitting we call a typical woman. I'm a poor defenceless female, so watch it. 24 hours a day. Things change like. It's getting on for a force 10 now. Hang fire on that bell. This is just my best. 365 days a year. Goodbye, crew world. Go ahead, just a bit of Jimmy! How are you, my friend? It has been my Here. pleasure. The harbour. <laughs> The sheltered estuary of the River Dee has been used as a fishing base for thousands of years. Until very recently, fishing was an important part of the city's industrial heritage. Not anymore. These days, only two or three fishing boats dock at Aberdeen Harbour with any regularity. and the number of processing factories has dwindled from 250 to less than 30. Comes up for quality. You may like to meet him in a dark night, would you? Alex Ferguson, or Fergie, is the factory manager at Andrew Christie Jr., a family-owned fish processor. And for all those who work there, it's an early start. There's people in at five in the morning, uh, taking fish in on setting up the factory, but the rest of the workers come in at six o'clock. Oh, how are you? Oh, shit, like what? <laughs> Got a lime in bed. What used to get up there, like, even the Sunday. Arthur is working in this factory for how long, Arthur? 34 years? 34 years. 34 years. It just feels like yesterday. Most of the fish they process comes from the market in Peterhead. Some dusk, nice pollock, beautiful cod, look at that. It's a catfish getting parked in there. Beautiful fish. He came in here at half past ten, right? It's now ten past twelve, it's the same fish going back on that lorry, going away to France. Fill it in, the skinning, the parking, the icing, all that in under two hours. Trying to get fresh on that. Yeah, just a phone call from BP, they want you back. It's Ralph Gregg's first day at his new job as a trainee pilot. Yeah, what's the supplier doing at the entrance? And he's learning how to drive a ship. In the simulator. We just spend all day just going out, turn around and come back in again. Get on the berth, turn around and go back out again. <laughs> we'll do it till he's sick of doing it. <laughs> he gets it right, is that right? <laughs> His trainer, Colin McRonald, went to sea when he was just 16. Don't run ahead till you're ready. Yeah. And there's not much he doesn't know about boats. So what tricks is he going to play on me? I've taken his bow thrust away from him. He's still using it, but it ain't working. <laughs> oh, yeah, the instructor always wins. A bow thruster failure makes it tricky to move around a confined space like the harbour. It's been over two minutes, and Ralph still hasn't noticed. 
This is, it's all about awareness. Look at what your instruments are telling you. Something not going according to plan here. Yeah. I told you he had something up his sleeve. I don't want him to have a go at it and see if he can do it. That's not what he's here for. He's got to make a right decision when things go wrong. Uh, if you keep your eye on down half, please, uh, we'll stop a couple of metres off. He just has to slow down a little bit. You know? And you only get that with your frights and the mistakes you make. I'll get, you'll get his frights. Ralph used to work at VTS or Vessel Traffic Services, the nerve centre of the harbour. Now that he's gone, there's a vacancy which Ellen Haugland is hoping to fill. And her training involves spending a few hours in the harbour itself. I'll join the pilot, I'll go on board the, the vessel and uh, see how it is to, uh, to go in the entrance to see how it is sailing here, because I've never been here before. Ellen has worked on large passenger and cargo vessels all over the world. But it's still an experience being battered by the North Sea. Ooh. Like many ex-sailors, she swapped a life at sea for a family, and she misses her first love. It was nice to be on board a ship again. It's uh, something I always long for, but being a VTS officer is almost the same, uh, just not with the rough seas and uh, bad weather. Here at VTS is where Ellen will undergo three weeks of intensive training. If she's successful, She'll become the harbour's first female VTS controller. I think it will be more weird for them. I've told they are old dinosaurs, so... But <laughs> I'm used to that. So you can have somebody coming in now... Ellen has to learn the names of the individual keys and the measurements of each of the 50 or so berths. We have the Malavia 19 with the Malavia 20. We have the Malavia 29 now. Not to be confused with the ASU 22 and the ASU 25, etc. So you can put it takes a long right, time right, to become yes, completely right. confident. I'm taking a deep breath and uh, I'm in charge. <laughs> 175 miles out at sea, the Bibi Sapphire is bracing itself for a Force 10. We need to make sure that all loose gear is lashed, make sure everything's ship shape in Bristol fashion, and we'll be fine. In theory, there's not a storm that could affect the dive support vessel. But it's not something that the ship's master, Hugh Jones, would like to put to the test. 16 and a half metres was the rise and fall of the. Uh, no, not bad guess, was it? Everything should be secure, especially in the cabin. Everyone on board is suffering, including saturation diver Terry Dearlove. It's bad news. It just wrecks everything. Everybody's just like run for cover. You're just better off just staying in your cabin and staying out of the way. Walking around the ship in extreme weather conditions is an art form all the seamen have mastered. Running the ship when it's this rough is also a challenge and it's going to become a whole lot worse. Canadian Coast Guard's putting out a storm warning. It's a race against time to strap down everything before the full force of the storm hits.
At the harbor, Ellen's continuing her training under VTS controller Barry Sanderline. To, uh, to go inside it just said, it just said would he get yeah. in on, on okay, arrival. Okay, then I'll do my very best now. It's not okay. like any other port, really, because things change like yon. Aberdeen VTS, who is calling? Aberdeen VTS, better about training. Uh, good afternoon. Um, we're, uh, the north Pier. Already, Ellen's floundering. See, now I've got someone I don't know who is. No, that's fine. If it's busy, you just tell them, just be aware of any moving traffic. Yeah, OK. If it's all quiet, it's, it's OK, and I can, I can think. But if we have people in the room talking, and it's very hard to, uh, to concentrate. There's a lot for Ellen to take in. The boatman will have to, first of all, let the island empress go of Pokraki, then go around, let go of the ASO 25s, and then the empress will go quayside, and the ASO 25 will go second out. Who said that again? <laughs> <laughs> I remember my, after my first week, week here, I had to go lie down in a darkened room for about 12 hours to cover my composure when I got home. One of the problems with on-the-job training is that everyone can overhear your mistakes. And boatman Alan Cowper draws his own conclusions. Pete, that's who's calling. Yeah, good morning. It's uh, Voss Venturer. Could I order boatman for 1300, please? We've got to move from here to Albert Key. From Albert Key East, and uh, where do you say you will be moving? So we're moving from Blakey's number five to Albert Key. She doesn't listen, that's it's wrong. Half the time she doesn't listen properly. 1100, yep, that's correct. Thank you. 1300. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's what we call a typical woman. But Ellen's not the only one who doesn't listen. Eh? Oh. He's for a podcast, so no, there's nothing. Towards the end of her shift, right. Ellen's feeling more confident. Our server, VTS. Yes, OK, you have uh, my permission. But Barry's not convinced. She's a mile away, uh, really. She's got three weeks of training to do, and from my own experience, I would say she'll need all of that. At the Crown and Anchor, barmaid Val Morrison is doing another shift. Refer you to D in your cell. Fainy, you want to join? Well, an answer. Oh, is your well, an answer coming in? Well, I hear. Oh, sport spot on. See, I'm a boy today. Uh, should I phone the bridge and get the put a tan oil? <laughs> There's a lot of nice looking guys come in here. And they're really nice looking. But it didn't make me say I would be out running after him and chasing after him. Okay? I'm a poor, defenceless female, so watch it. <laughs> Did I start? But at my age, I wouldn't be able to run off a quick shot. I'd have to stop a few faces and say, hey, could you wait for me? Despite being just across from the harbour, not all of her customers are seafarers. So what are you doing here in Aberdeen then? We'll come to Morris Dance. Oh, you're joking. Yes, we've never had Morris dancers in. Never. You're the first Morris You're the first Morris dancers in, my darling. I like somebody that you can actually hear a laugh and a joke with, and it's got kind of got the same daft sense of humour as I've got. There's nothing better than dancing. Oh! And, and dancing closely with a woman. Well, you're not getting a dance for me, you little <laughs> so you can forget that. <laughs> and I like somebody that you could turn around and say anything you like to. The only poker you'll get is one out the fire. <laughs> but even with Val, there's a more reflective side. I've been psychic since I've been six years old. You, me next, me next. you are so just full of <laughs> devilment, it's unreal. You have been since you've been a kid. Yeah. But you know something? He likes fun, but he's a very private person as well. You're spot on. Spot on. I've never gone by looks. Because I had a nice looking husband and he was just an <laughs> Before they leave, the Morris dancers have a treat. A preview of their concert on Saturday. Out in the North Sea, the storm is raging, and the crew of the Bibi Sapphire 
are steeling themselves for a turbulent few days. How much, uh, how much movement have we got on the DP now? How, how much are we moving from centre point? Uh, eight metres. Each on the heli deck. Up. But they can't go back until they finish the job they were contracted to do. Most of the boats that didn't have to be out there, they'll have gone in for shelter into Aberdeen Bay. It'd be nice and it'd be quite comfortable in there. A lot more comfortable than we are, that's for sure. Terry's weathering the storm in the confines of his cabin. Hey, here we go. But for deck foreman Ian Buchanan, it's work as usual. The white containers which have broken free are salt sacks with used soda sorb, a filter for the diver's gas. Well, they try and stack some of them up here. But no one wants to end up overboard. It's too dangerous to work there. Tidy them up real well. Uh, wait until the weather calms down. Yeah, this is, this is as bad as you want this to be out here. This is just madness. Mother Nature at her worst. I think we're probably the only vessel out in the North Sea, unless you're a fisherman and you're mental. A few weeks after she first started her VTS training, Ellen has her final assessment. In the beginning, it was totally uh, almost catastrophic. Everything was happening in my head, and I couldn't get manage to uh, to understand what was happening. It was very uh, confusing. But but now uh, the two last days have been not so busy, and then today I felt that I could manage. The examiners will test, among other things, her general knowledge of the harbour and emergency procedures. Ellen, do you want to come up? Yeah. If she's successful, she'll be allowed to work in VTS on her own. At the fish processors, it's business as usual. We've only got few Scottish people working here now. Arthur Stewart is one of them. There's too many, too many of us left. The Siberian tiger. <laughs> Basically, they don't want to work in fish factories. There's a lot of other industries in Aberdeen, oil-related work. We can't compete with that. I think we are all my friends. I think I'm the only one that never went offshore. Yeah? Yeah. Every one of them tried it. The difference in wages is just awesome. I wish to come in here and start here on the freezing call in the winter. My son came in here when he was 16 years old and he was doing this job here. And he turned around to me and he says, I ain't staying here. I'm not doing this for the rest of my life. I'm out of here. Put the toilet in the middle of the screen. <laughs> I always think they've built a big black hole in the toilet. <laughs> oh, well, you win us two girls and I'll get a couple of loons on here. Oh, no. You want to scan up? There are around 35 people working in the factory most of them from Eastern Europe. To be quite honest, if it wasn't for them, it would be very difficult to run my business. Yeah. This is Pavel. I don't speak English very well. Oh. He speaks English very, very well. Well, he asked for a pay rise last week. These people are so keen to work. 
if you ask these people to start at six o'clock tomorrow morning, they'll be standing at the door at quarter past five, waiting to get in, you know? Ellen has passed, but her first solo shift has been delayed. They just said, well, we have all been through this and it's, uh, I've been sitting in a dark room and they all say that. So uh, I guess they just know how it feels uh, after only 10 days. So. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. Like, uh... Instead, she'll spend one more night supervised by another VTS controller. Out at sea, the worst of the storm is finally over. And the crew are having to deal with its aftermath. <laughs> Coming to the gym to do a little bit of an exercise. Somebody had a party here last night. Don't know what's going on. I think it might have something to do with the weather, though. Oh, man. Nowhere on board has escaped unscathed. It's all collapsed and smashed a bit. I think it's a bad time now if I ask one of the Filipinos if my washing's ready. The calm weather means it's back to work as usual. And once the job's finished, the Bibi Sapphire can finally head back to port. I think I've packed my bag three times already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the night shift at VTS and Ralph arrives to supervise Ellen. I'll just let you carry on. I'll go get my sleeping bag. <laughs> but there won't be much rest for either of them. I'm only looking at the next 20 minutes because otherwise I'll get, yeah, it's, it looks very busy. I might have to just wander away and go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll be ready in, uh, in 20 minutes for you. Don't tell me, oh, this is the calm night shift. This is... No, this is not a calm night shift. <laughs> <laughs> you can never guarantee a quiet night. Never. I will key three. You'll be ready in, uh, in But the intensive minutes. training has paid off, and Ellen is managing without any help. Yes, you have uh, clearance to the cut. Please stand by. Uh, we'll see when we can get you in. Yes, thank you. More pilot jobs. And Ralph's beginning to wonder if he might not be more useful elsewhere. The six boats on that list for piloting at the moment, I could do most of them. <laughs> Can we get a pilot anytime soon? Uh, not anytime. We are quite uh, busy right now. I would think it would be after midnight. We'll send you out, Ralph. If you had two pilots on, you'd be sat with your feet up on the desk <laughs> reading your newspaper. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Are you going to be here tomorrow night? If you're happy enough to sort of sit up here by yourself uh, with me on the, other, the end of a phone, if required, <laughs> that's the way it'll work. At the Crown and Anchor, Val is still fending off potential suitors. Will I fit? Would you fall in love with you? Would I fall in love with you, no, darling? You'll need to join the queue. <laughs> tons and tons and tons of I just knock him back. I really knock him back. It's lovely, though. Even at my age, they still ask you. But I think he's f***ed, so... I do. <laughs> Speckled hen. Two. Two. And they're all just different ones. The Morris dancers are back. And this time, they brought a few more friends. Val. Yes, darling. This dance is for you. Oh, thank you, my darling. A, a dance entitled "We Fair Made with a Sharp Tongue." Man, you him. I'll give you a sharp tongue, you fat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, dance by the little fat. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> She may be the belle of the crown and anchor, but Val is relishing the single life. I'm happy to come in here at nights. My house is the same way I left it. I've nobody arguing with me saying, where have you been last time in the morning? Where have you been? Are you working again? I've nobody to answer at all but me. Her 11-year marriage ended badly, 
and there hasn't been anyone serious since. I just turned around and said one night, enough is enough, I cannot stand this no more. And I took my son and I took myself and I left. And I vowed no man would ever, ever lift their hand to me ever in my lifetime again. Never. And I thought, right, you change your life. And I did. But it was actually the pub that helped me. It has been my pleasure. <laughs> that was my turning point in my life. All these beers! All these beers! And that's me. <laughs> that's my life. <laughs> my darling! See you later. Yeah, take care. For the crew of the Bibi Sapphire, Aberdeen Harbour is finally within sight. I'm just looking at the golf course and getting tangs. <laughs> Smack one off the heli deck. <laughs> he's going in, then the guy closest to us, he'll be going in at some stage. And uh, once he's picked his pilots up, it'll be our turn. After 38 days at sea, Terry's becoming impatient. We've got about another 10 minutes before we get in. Got me phone, got four signals, that means we're nearly there. Got my passport, I'm ready for off. Just can't wait to get off the gangway and get on the plane, and then we'll all just star best our different ways. That was the crew wondering which key we're going to so they can order taxis to go home. <laughs> yeah, I don't get to do this very often. <laughs> They're all queuing up to get on. Yeah, bless them. Take it in without a bump. That's the whole idea. Like most of the crew, Terry's looking forward to seeing his family again. My daughter, she was 18 last Saturday. I thought I'd make that, but I missed it. But it's just one of them things, and I'm not going to get that back. But obviously, when I get home, she can take me out for a pint now. She's 18. Yeah, I know she missed me, yeah. She missed me, yeah, because she wanted me to be there. But um, I promised her I'd be on for Christmas this year, so I think I'll be sticking to that promise. Coming up, Doug Rennie visits a fish auction. Yes, Chaplain Howard Drysdale's oh, feeling stressed. We're getting any younger, Brian. <laughs> and a supply ship heads out to the rigs. We're like the milkman. We deliver on a on a daily basis. 